Good morning and welcome to our today's lecture. So we have started our discussion on Pythagoras or Pythagoreanism in our last lecture. So today we will try to finish our discussion on Pythagoreanism and then we'll move on to the other schools, uh, schools of philosophy. Now, in our, in our previous lecture, we talked about that how Pythagoras actually, he influenced the later generation, especially the later generation, philosophers from the later generations, and also he contributed immensely in the mathematics. And uh, we find that his philosophy sometimes they're very mystical. And also he was one of the first Western philosophers who believed in meta metempsychosis, or you can see the transmigration of the soul, that is this soul will be transformed into something and it will, it will migrate to a different place. So that, uh, that was his belief. And also we talked about uh, the reincarnation after death. So he also believed in reincarnation after death. That was the part of his philosophy. He also subscribed to the views of another of his teachers, that is an examiner, that the ultimate substance of things is what he described as apparent. That means the boundless or the uh, unidentified infinite or infinite. So apparent or the unidentified infinite, which means this whole world actually, it has an ultimate substance. Ekta, uh, unidentified infinite or the boundless boundless he didn't say anything exactly that he believed in god or this is not the regular definition of god but it's a kind of being or it's a kind of substance that they, they believed in and that is boundless pythagoras believed that the Apiron or Peron had inhaled the vine from outside, filling the cosmos with the vacuous bubbles that split the universe into many interconnected parts, separated by void. And that this play, this play of Apiron and Peron takes place according to a natural common, always somehow underlying all this series is the assumption that numbers and mathematics constitute the true nature of things. Since he was a mathematician, so he believed in the true nature of things that can be explained by numbers and mathematics. And also you can see he, he believed in a kind of void, believed that the apron had inhaled the void from outside. So there are lots of void, emptiness, on a shunnuta ase. A shunnuta ta ki ki kore? Inhale kore, she nishash niye nai, tamano to she chere dai, but we just take consume kore thale. Filling the cosmos with vacuous bubbles, so filling the cosmos with the vacuous bubbles that is split that is split the universe into many interconnected parts separated by void. So you see, exhale mane shedo chhe kono kuchh ke bear kore dar inhale mane kono kuchh ke nishashe madhumi niye na nish mane mane prashasha mane jite. Ila nishashe mane jite nilbato hai. That is exhale. So inhale mane shedo ke niye na void ta ke bolte jai ekar aur ki kore jai an undefined the undefined infinite or the boundless shedo ki kore void ta ke shushe na shedo niye na. Even poor cosmos by Shamos to Bisho, Jacket to Swiss Church, she had the figure with vacuous bubbles. It could feel got a key there, it took that bubble some of the check existence of it. It only took me both the borrowed on a glow world by universes together. It'll come at a idea to me. She will like a key called bubbles and motto. Shamos to cosmos there to worry a day that is speed the universe into many interconnected parts, separate by void. এবং সেটা কি করে আমাদের ইউনিভার্সটা আছে ইউনিভার্সটাকে এই বাবলস গুলো ভেঙে ভেঙে টুকরো করে দেয় আলাদা আলাদা করে স্প্লিট করে দেয় কিন্তু সেটা কি দিয়ে কানেক্টেড থাকে ভয়েড দিয়ে অর্থাৎ একটা ইউনিভার্সের সাথে আরেকটা ইউনিভার্স সেপারেটেড হচ্ছে ভয়েড মাঝখানে একটা শূন্যতা আছে একটা বিশাল কিছু আছে এবং উনি এটাকে উনি বলছেন যে এই ভয়েডটা এই শূন্যতাটাকে নিয়ন্ত্রণ করে বা শেষ করে দেয় বা সেটাকে কনজিউম করে সেটা হচ্ছে আন আনডিফাইন্ড ইনফিনাইট এটা সেটাকে কনজিউম করে দেয় আবার এই ভয়েডটা আবার কি করে সমস্ত ইউনিভার্স গুলোকে একটার সাথে আরেকটাকে জোড়া দিয়ে রাখে ইন্টারকানেক্টেড পার্স এর সাথে একত্রিত করে রাখার চেষ্টা করে এন্ড দ্যাট দিস প্লে অফ অ্যাপ্রন এন্ড পেরন মানে এই যে আন আইডেন্টিফাইড ইনফিনাইট অসীম আর পেরন হচ্ছে পেরন হচ্ছে তোমার সসীম এই অসীম আর সসীমের খেলা চলছে একটা হারমোনির মাধ্যমে একটা ন্যাচারাল হারমোনি এখানে একটা ঐকতান আছে একটা মিল আছে এই মিলের মাধ্যমে একটা হারমোনির মাধ্যমে সবগুলো একসাথে জয়েন্টেড থাকে কানেক্টেড থাকে এন্ড this uh, somehow underlying all these theories. So, if you have to do this, you can do this. 
is the assumption that numbers and mathematics constitute the true nature of things. So the true nature of things, if you try to judge the nature of the essence of a thing, that the essence of the thing, you can judge it with the help of numbers and mathematics. Uh, did you get the point from the first slide? Did you get it? Is that clear? Rahan. Understood? The first slide, the discussion from the first slide, did you understand it? Yes, sir. sir. I have a uh, she can suggest to video the Kenya, but I mean, we react on the Korea, the second time you can watch it. A proper booty, Tora Buzha Shop Shubinati, Bangladesh, the Mustava. The Shamos to Bishop to void as ever shown nota, but emptiness, Kali. She void Guluke, Pythagoras Bolton, the April and back to Oshin at the Shopti at undefined infinite. J infinite bar Oshimir Konshonganai. Edukum at the Oshim the Shetaki Kore. ওই void গুলোকে সে নিঃশেষিত করে ফেলে পরবর্তীতে একটা ভ্যাকুয়াস বাবলস তৈরি হয় ভ্যাকুয়াস বাবলস গুলোর মাধ্যমে এটা হচ্ছে পিথাগোরিয়ান বিলিফ এটা আমাদের বিলিফ না যে ভ্যাকুয়াস বাবলস এর মাধ্যমে কি করে ইউনিভার্স গুলো তো অনেক বড় ইউনিভার্স এর অনেক গ্রহ নক্ষত্র বা একটা ইউনিভার্স এর সাথে আরেকটা ইউনিভার্স যাতে কোলাইড না করে উনি বলতে যে ইউনিভার্স গুলো শূন্যতা দিয়ে সেগুলোকে ভাগ করে দাও সেগুলো ভাগ ভাগ আছে এবং এই void গুলো কি করে পরবর্তীতে উনি বলছেন যে আবার এই void void গুলো দিয়ে যেমন স্প্লিট যেমন করছে বাবলস দিয়ে আর এই শূন্যতা দিয়ে আবার সেগুলোকে করে কি ইন্টারকানেক্টেড করে অর্থাৎ একটা ইউনিভার্সের সাথে আরেকটা ইউনিভার্সের মাঝখানে একটা স্পেস আছে সোজা কথা সবগুলো ইউনিভার্স একসাথে লাগানো না একটা ইউনিভার্সের সাথে আরেকটা ইউনিভার্সের যে পার্থক্য যে ফাঁকা জায়গাটা এইটাকে বলা হচ্ছে void আর উনি বলছেন যে void অর্থাৎ এই voidটা একটা ইন্টারপ্লে কিসের ইন্টারপ্লে দ্যাট ইজ দা ইন্টারপ্লে অফ এ পেরিয়ন এন্ড পেরিয়ন because this shashim ebong ashim ei dujone milei somosto bishwer moddhe ekta harmony create kore that's why this universe uh, and this world actually we can see it exists ei karone egulo shob ebhabe sundor bhabe ache tale elomelo hoye jabe shob ar ei je ekta phenomenon the phenomenon of this universe and this interesting phenomenon of the interplay of aperon and also the perion this interplay of this kind of uh, the, the i mean these two finite and infinite this interplay of finite and infinite it can be analyzed it can be observed with the help of numbers and mathematics now i'll move on to the next slide here you see the pythagoreans were well known in antiquity for their vegetarianism so you see they were vegetarian so they didn't eat meat they were vegetarian which they practiced for religious ethical and ascetic regions so they were mysterious kind of people i told you that they were mystical and especially people who are a little bit mystical you will find them that they don't eat meat because meat actually it makes people very hyperactive and also it creates a kind of recklessness in the human body and mind it's their belief it's their belief that's why they would take vegetable only because of the religious ethical and ascetic reasons religious i know you understand it ethical i know you understand it you understand ethical right you know the ethical reason ethical what does it mean ethic who can say no ethics sir exactly so for religious ethical or dharmio no ethic even ascetic reason ascetic exact bengali i can't remember but ascetic means when people uh, they actually don't they don't bother about the worldly life tara parthibo jibon der bother kore na kono kichu tatke ar touch kore na ekta sannyas vritti eta bangla hocche jara jara sannyas vritti abolambon kore bujhte parcho ki bolchi ji sir we call them ascetic that means they are abstemious about lots of things they they are very much abstemious they don't they don't drink they don't take heavy food heavy lunch heavy supper or heavy breakfast they eat less they sleep less they think about the worldly life less or even sometimes they don't think about the worldly life tare parthibo jibon na oto chinta kore na what they have or what they don't have they don't bother about this so completely you can say in bengali we call it sannyashi so this sannyash vritti ba sannyash monobhava bondo ei sob karone tara ki koreche tara vegetarian chilo tara onno kichu khetena 
women who were held to be different from men, but not necessarily inferior, were given equal opportunity to study as Pythagoreans, although they had to, they had to also learn practical domestic skills. So you can see, according to Pythagoreans, women, they were, they, they were also provided with, uh, or they are facilitated with the equal opportunity in the society. They can also study uh, the Pythago along with the other Pythagoreans. They were given the same opportunity, same access to the education, although they have to learn some extra, extra things, that is domestic skills. That means how to manage your family, how to do the daily chores, how to be a good mother, how to be a good wife, uh, how to do the daily chores of your household works. So all these things actually they were taught. So domestic skills, along with they had the same access to the education, just like the boys or the men. And also, but they were regarded as different from men. Certainly we are different from men, but they had a different kind of perspective about the women. So they were regarded as something a different, a different species, not like men, unlike men. Pythagoreanism developed at some point into two separate schools of thought. One is we'll go for the English translation, that is listeners who focused on the more religious and ritualistic aspects of Pythagoras' teachings, and the other is learners who extended and developed the more mathematical and scientific world he began. So two groups of people, or two groups of schools, one will only listen. They will not generate, they will not teach. They are just the learners, I mean, they are just the listeners, they just listen. So focus on the religious and ritualistic aspects. So they will listen to the religious scriptures and ritualistic, and they'll also listen to the religious uh, and ritualistic aspects. And accordingly, they will practice it in their life. But a dhormiyo katha shunme, even a ritual er katha tarah janme, ki bhabhe kon ki jinish kote ha, ki bhabhe religion er kon dinish ta kora hoti, te eglo tarah shikbe, shiyonu jay tarah palon kurbe, they are just the listeners, ar kichu itadar kaath nai. So this is one group of people. So two separate schools. So Pythagorean school tarah yaba dhuto bhaagya bhaag kora. Aak group hoche tarah shudhu, uh, religious perspective with Rashid Gyan or Jun Kora, Arakta Prabhu said, Our to their learners so extended and developed the more mathematical and scientific work he began. So, here he means Pythagor uh, Pythagoras. So, Pythagoras actually he worked on mathematics and also different sci uh, also scientific exploration or experimentation. So, his, uh, this group of people, those who want to Pythagoras, so they will be learners. So, they will practice mathematics and science. And they will also try to develop some, I mean, new knowledge. So, these two group of schools. Uh, under the Pythagorean school. So uh, you can see the listener group, it's very difficult to pronounce, but it's still I can give it a try, that is acousmatico. Actually, it's from the acoustic. You know the word acoustic? Dear student, do you know the word acoustic? If you don't answer, then I will ask you individually. Let me see. Y yes, sir. Yes. Okay, Rajan, tell me, what is acoustic? Uh, acoustic. Yes? Rajal, I can't hear you. Can anyone hear him? Okay, Rajal, what is he saying? Sound, Tony. Exactly. Who said that? What's your name? So Tani. Tani. Tani, you're absolutely right. Acoustic means that is related with sound. Okay. So acoustic means those who will only listen. So claim that the mathematikoi, that means who believed in science, or that group, learners were not genuinely Pythagorean, but followers of the renegade, Pythagorean uh, Hippasus. So you see, renegade Pythagorean Hippasus. So Hippasus actually, he also learned, he was also from this Pythagorean school. Renegade means those people who, people who uh, left their own group. We call them renegade. Shwapak Kutagi. renegade. So he said, these people, at, I mean, this acoustic or the listeners, they are saying that the mathematics, a mathematics by learner, the group also was a genuine Pythagorean, because they are not a follower. So they are not a follower. They are a listener by acoustic, and they are not a original Pythagorean. 
So two groups are mostly mostly part of the actor donor superior or inferior complex, as, and they, they had some kind of conflict among themselves so between these two groups. So the mathematics, on the other hand, allowed that the epistemically were indeed Pythagorean, but felt that they were more representative of Pythagoras' real views. But you see, this the other group, I mean the learners. They were very accommodating. They said that no, okay, no problem. Agusti, uh, uh, this group or the listener groups, they are also part of the this Pythagorean school, but they are not the real Pythagorean school. They don't they don't represent them properly. We the learners, or you can say the mathematicoi, they are saying that we represent Pythagorean or Pythagoras uh, Pythagoras views. We we represent it more uh, accurately than the listeners or the acoustematicoi. So you can see there were a conflict between these two uh, different groups of schools under the uh, same school that is Pythagoreanism. The mathematical uh, group eventually became closely associated with Plato and Platonism, and much of Pythagoreanism seems to overlap Platonism. The mathematical became wandering ascetics, finally joining the Syricism movement of the fourth century BC. So these two groups from the Pythagoras, one is mathematical, another one is mathematical. So what happened that this group who were the learners or who loved mathematics, eventually they actually, uh, in the long run, they became uh, platonic. Uh, they uh, actually, they were more close to Plato, Plato and Platonism. So they were more close to Plato and Platonism. So you can see that how one group, actually they were more close to uh, Plato and his views. That's where you can find that some of the views of the Pythagoreanism and the Platonism, they overlap. Uh, they might seem similar. The acostumitakui or the listeners, they become later in the later on later life, they become wandering ascetics. A group of Parabutita Shampuna Shonash Bitta Shonashi Hoja, and finally joining the cynicism movement of the fourth century BC. Cynicism or cynic, they are another group of people. And this group, they are the ascetic group. They were very cynic and they were very much uh, you can say uh, practical and they didn't bother about the wall life in any way. In cynic so they had their own point of view and they were very much cynic, uh, very much, uh, you can say, uh, uh, they had opinion about everything and they had their own opinion in their own way. That's why we call them cynic. And the, these ascetic groups or wandering ascetics or the listeners group, actually they become cynic. Uh, just uh, like the uh, with people from the cynicism, uh, cynicism movement, and it was in fourth century BC. That means Jesus Christ had joined the Tasha Botarake, a cynicism development, or a movement of Our Agustimitakoi, our listeners, group Jara Chilo, our Pythagorean school, Tara, a group of Shatta Mishaja. So I'm a declam, the Pythagorean school, the Dutu school, but our school of Dutu school of thoughts, but Tintar Dutu Binu Tara, Tarabar. Now next. New Pythagoreanism was a revival in the second century BC, second century period of various ideas traditionally associated with the followers of Pythagoras. Notable new Pythagoreans include first century Apollonius of uh, Tyana and their meetings were mainly held in Rome. So you see in Rome, in the second Second BC, that is in the fourth century BC or fifth century BC, actually it happened there. In the second century uh, I mean, uh, BC and also in the second century AD, or that the Babuk Shomo is a reporter to the new Pythagoreanism, but Pythagorean is an idea of it. Notun Kuri, new means Notun, new. Notun Kura was a revival, revive Kore, Amar Punujagori Toy, Manushet in Amar Hapna Shukor, Amar Dictipas, Rome, Italy, Rome, Sheshomate, Taraitan Yakatko, at the Pythagoreanism, Amar at the Chorcha Shuja, Sheshomate. Ultimately, Pythagoreanism has been a dynamic force on Western culture. It has creatively influenced philosophers, theologians, mathematicians, uh, astronomers, as well as musicians, composers, poets, and architects of the Middle Ages. So you see how uh, actually it influenced creatively all these peoples. Musicians were also influenced by their mysticism, composers, that means who writes music, uh, who arranges music, people who, who uh, arrange music, we call them composers. So these musicians, composers, and poets, architects, all of them, they're heavily influenced by the mathematical forms, the scientific forms of uh, Pythagoreanism, and also the creative force of Pythagoreanism, or the mysticism of the Pythagoreanism, they're influenced by. So 
uh, you can see as a school of thought or philosophy, it was highly influential at that time. And it's still, we can feel the influence of Soway of Pythagoreanism is still um, in our present, present days. Okay, so we are done with Pythagoreanism. Now we'll move on to the next philosophical thought that is Sufism. Can you see the screen, dear students? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay, uh, I think that you will find it very interesting, this Sufism. Now, here we see, what does it say? Sufism is an early pre-Socratic school of philosophy in ancient Greece. It is a name often given to the so-called seven sages of seventh and sixth century BC. Sixth century BC. So seven sages, that there are seven prominent philosophers at that time, and they actually practiced this philosophy, that is Sufism. Okay, and it was practiced in 7th and 6th century BC at that time. Okay, now, uh, but also to many other early Greek philosophers who were more concerned with man himself and how he should behave than with, uh, than with uh, big questions about the universe. So you see, they concentrated on the man, not on the universe. But earlier we have seen that how actually this universe works and also the essence of the universe, all these things were the matter of, uh, you can say the matter of research or talk or arguments uh, of the earlier philosophers. But here we can see a shift of paradigm in the school of philosophical thoughts. So these sophists actually, they give importance on the man, not on the universe. So they didn't thought about the universe, they uh, most likely they thought about the man himself. The term Sophism comes from the Greek Sophos or Sophia. And you know, Sophos or Sophia, when actually we all, we talked about the philosophy. So the same word Sophos means wisdom or knowledge or wise. So the same word has been used in the, uh, in the Sophism. Here is it an originally referred to any expertise in a specific domain of knowledge or practice. So originally it meant that if you have expertise in a specific area, then you would be termed or you'd be called as sophist. So that was the earlier meaning of it. After a period where it mainly referred to poets, the word came to describe general wisdom and especially wisdom about human affairs. So earlier, the poets actually, they were called sophists. That means they were wise men. But later on, you can see it became general wisdom. So just to refer to general wisdom, they say sophist or sophism, and especially wisdom about human affairs. And if it is about human beings, human affairs, then we would call it sophism or soft, the people actually who, pra who practice this kind of philosophy, we call them sophist. Now, over times, it came to denote a class of itinerant, itinerant intellectuals who taught courses in excellence of virtue, who speculated about the nature of language and culture and who employed rhetoric to achieve their purposes, which was generally the, to persuade or convince others. Now, this sophist, what happens that over time, the itinerant in intellectuals, that means now it become uh, a group of intellectuals itinerant, but I mean, they were roaming around different parts of the country. They were not staying in one particular place. So this sophist, I mean, this kind of philosophers, they will, teach people courses in excellence of virtue. So they will teach people that how to, how to acquire excellence in your life, how to acquire virtue in your life, how to, how to become virtuous, how to become excellent in your life. I mean, especially, and often charging high fees for it. You see, these people, they are the first philosophers in the history of philosophy that they used to ask money for their knowledge. So if you take any, education from, or if you're under the tutelage of any, any sophist, that's, that sophist will charge you. He will charge high fees for teaching you. Just like, I mean, the present days, we see that, for example, private tuition or private tutors, or even in school and colleges, you can see we teach you and in return, we get money. So you see, this was a sophist, they introduced this idea, the formal education or this idea that if you really want to learn, you can learn it for me, but you have to pay for it. So they were the first philosophers who took money for the knowledge they disseminated among the common people and who speculated about the nature of language. So they worked on the nature of language and culture and who employed rhetoric to achieve their purposes. So they worked on the language and also they will 
they will give, they will provide you knowledge uh, about culture about language and also they will use rhetoric to achieve their purposes you know rhetoric is the, the art of speech rhetoric means the art of speech bhaktita ba katha bolar koushal technique uh, that we call rhetoric you understand it right Dear student, can you can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Majhe majhe respond ko. Nala bhav mona jaa me bhutore kono kori bache katha bolsi. Tumra kyu nahi? It's it feels like it's spooky. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. All right. So, thala amra buzlam ki je era ki kurtho era manush ke ghure ghure knowledge ditho. Kito tar vinamay thara taaka nitho. Bangi raya chhe pratham philosopher jana knowledge er vinamay taaka ne aashuru kolo manush kaste. Majhe chhe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we can blame yes, them. Yes, sir. 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 टा <laughs> 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 Uh, I mean, art of speech, or you can say the how to uh, convince people by using language, by using logic, or different kinds of uh, rhetoric devices, or uh, device. I mean, or you can say the figurative speech that you use while actually composing or writing poetry. Amar kovita lekhar shomai je technique gulo bhavar kori na kothar marpas bhavar kori na jate manush mukdh hoy shita shone bol. Shadaron kotha ko amra ashadaron kore thele rhetoric er madhme. Amra kintu kore chhe rhetoric and prosody. मानुष के so they were the real tutors or real masters of the day shei shomoy ekta bolte paro je tara tara taka nilo kintu tara ei formal education er je ekta setup toiri kora eta tara shuru korechilen bole ajke amra ei porjonto ashte perechi eta language ba amra je kono je subject er khetre je amra kibhabe porchi porchi so they started the idea okay and they also started the idea that how to persuade people how to convince others onno ke kibhabe prorochito kora jay convince kora jay ei technique tai art ta रिलीजन लो एंडिक्स Many sophists were just as religious as most of their contemporaries, but some held atheistic or agnostic views. So this is the problem: that when actually you use logic too much and you try to persuade or convince people by the use of language, then you become very much, uh, uh, you can say, doubtful about the existing knowledge and existing uh, views. So the same happened with them. And you see, their knowledge was held in the relativistic view. This is very important on cognition and knowledge. That is the way you think, the the way you actually get knowledge. So they are very much relative. I mean, they are saying that knowledge is relative. Your cognition or your understanding of the truth is that is relative. You cannot say this is absolute truth. There is nothing beyond this. This is the only truth. You cannot say that. These sophists they will challenge it by using their rhetoric. Kothar mar pas de tarat kon shita ke je tumi jab bolso shita the shukti na shita tarat praman kora cheshta korbe tarat shita kurto because they have that technique. They develop that technique of speech. Tarat bhasha kothar shita technique ka develop korte chhe. So there is and they believe that. That there is no absolute truth. Both are, I can say, absolute truth. Absolute truth, but what is it? Absolute truth. 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 Absolute tru
এবং একই সময় দুটো জিনিসই সত্যি হতে পারে তোমার কথাও সত্যি হতে পারে আমারটাও সত্যি হতে পারে একই সময় দ্যাট ইজ ইউ ক্যান নট সে দ্যাট দ্য ইওর ট্রুথ ইজ দ্য অনলি ট্রুথ এন্ড মাই মাই ট্রুথ ইজ নাথিং অর আই ক্যান নট সে দ্যাট মাই ট্রুথ ইজ দ্য অনলি ট্রুথ এন্ড ইওর ট্রুথ ইজ নাথিং উই ক্যান নট সে দ্যাট এন্ড দে অলসো হ্যাড স্কেপটিক্যাল ভিউজ তারা সুন্দর প্রবণ ছিলেন ট্রুথ অর মোরালিটি সো ইফ ইউ সে দিস ইজ দ্য ট্রুথ ইফ ইউ সে দিস ইজ মোরালিটি দেন দে উইল আস্ক ইজ হোয়াট ইজ মোরালিটি why this is this is the only moral thing in the world etai keno shudhumatro moral etai keno shudhumatro noitik ota noy keno so you see they would ask questions and they would pose lots of questions and also they uh, they developed the that rhetoric to ask questions it prosto kora technique ta eta tara develop kore felache language technique ta tara develop korche kibhabe persuade korte hoy manushke kibhabe kotha maniye nite hoy maniye ante hoy ei ta tara kore convince korar technique ta tara develop korche এবং তারা ছিল সন্দেহ প্রবণ তারা কোনো কিছুই অ্যাবসলিউট বলে ধরে নিত না প্রত্যেকটা জিনিসকে তারা প্রশ্ন করে সেটার ভিতর থেকে অন্য কিছু বের করার চেষ্টা করত সো দ্যাট ওয়াজ আ সফিস্ট ওকে এন্ড অলসো কন্টেন্ট ক্রিটিসিজমস অফ রিলিজিয়ন সো দে অলসো ক্রিটিসাইজ রিলিজিয়ন এন্ড ল এন্ড এথিক্স সো ইন দ্য সোসাইটি দ্য এক্সিস্টিং রিলিজিয়ন এন্ড এক্সিস্টিং লস এন্ড এথিক্স দে অলসো কোশ্চেন দেম কোশ্চেন দোজ থিংস সো দে ডিডন্ট টেক হিম ফর গ্রান্টেড দে কোশ্চেন এভরিথিং দ্যাট ওয়াজ देयर ইন দ্য সোসাইটি দ্য ভিউজ and many sophists were just as religious as most of their contemporaries so most of the sophists they were religious they believed in religion but some some of them they were atheist or agnostic atheist means they didn't believe in god and some of them they didn't believe in religion and neither they were at the same time they are not sure about the existence of god so sometimes they are they say that god is there but they didn't believe in religion sometimes they were very much doubtful about the existence of god in bengali we call them shongshoybadi tara thik originally atheist mane ekbare ishwar ke bishwas korne type er lok na tara ishwar ke bishwas kore kintu abar shei sathe tara religion ke kono kichu bishwas kore na shudhu ek allah tar mane kintu ar kono kichu tara bishwas kore na to amra tader ke bole shongshoybadi abar onek shomoy tara ishwar ke bishwas korche abar korche na eta dora cholar moto that's in called agnostic so typical sophist quotations include man is the measure of all things that is uh, it was by protagoras and justice is nothing other than the advantage of the strong but these are very strong words you can see man is the measure of all things so you see during the renaissance period the renaissance period in, in uh, uh, you can say in the after the medieval period and also after the dark age in europe after the dark age you can see there was a renaissance especially in the uh, 18th and 19th century or even at the late, uh, late 17th century you can see that because during this renaissance period they believe that man is the measure of all things that means man will decide that what is good or what is bad it's nothing that divine or someone or some existence some being uh, from above he will decide everything for human beings it's not like that that if you really want to uh, if you really want to compare anything if you really want to judge anything then man is the measure of all things manusher moddhe diye tobake sob kichu porikha korte manushi bolbe kon ta thik kon ta bad thik manushi thik dharm korbe kon ta shotti manushi nirdharan korbe what is morality not religion dharmo na it is about the man is the measure of all things and you see it's very much individualistic so you can see the romantic era the you see they promoted the idea of individualism and also in the renaissance they promoted the idea of individual or self that it was very much individualistic from, I mean, from that perspective so it is not at that time only the sophist even before the i mean 400 bc you can see protagoras before the birth of the jesus christ so they Uh, they actually propagated or promulgated these ideas that man is the measure of all things there are onek age theke tadare adhunik chinta bhabna chilo and protagoras actually said that and also there is an, another one justice is nothing other than the advantage of the stronger just imagine what is it say in our society we can see that uh, the i mean the people who are very strong i mean politically who are strong and also financially who are very strong well connected see these people uh, i mean for them justice uh, it will be uh, done in a different way and the, for the poor people who are not well connected who doesn't have any sponsor and not politically connected oriented these people they will suffer a lot so and uh, for them justice is always delayed but for the people in the upper class i mean justice is never delayed and they decide that what is just and what is unjust what is justice what is injustice they decide it. do you get the point what i'm saying yes sir yes sir mane jara samaj e strong tarai to justice nirdharan kore jemon rajnitik netribindo jara shoktishali তারাই তো সংসদে ঠিক করবেন যে আইন প্রণয়ন পত্র আমরা পাস করব তারা আমাদের হয়ে তারা সকল আইন প্রণয়ন করেন এবং অধিকাংশ ক্ষেত্রে যারা ক্ষমতার কাছাকাছি থাকেন বা ক্ষমতায় থাকেন তারা নিজেদের সুবিধা অনুযায়ী জাস্টিস গুলো নির্ধারণ করেন আর আমরা যারা সাধারণ মানুষ আমরা সব সময় সাফার করতে থাকি আমাদের জন্য যারা জাস্টিসটা নয় এই জন্য বলছি দ্যাট জাস্টিস ইজ নাথিং আদার দ্যান দ্য অ্যাডভান্টেজ অফ দ্য স্ট্রং আর বলছি জাস্টিস আসলে ওই সম্পদশালী বা শক্তিশালীদের কিছু সুবিধা দেয়া ছাড়া অন্য কিছুই নাই সেটাই আসলে জাস্টিস অর্থাৎ ওদের সুবিধা হবে যা 
সেটার অনুযায়ী যা কিছু করা হচ্ছে যে ল তৈরি করা হচ্ছে ওটাই আসলে জাস্টিস আমাদের সুবিধার জন্য কোন কিছু আসলে জাস্টিস সেটা করা হয় না uh i think i have discussed already i mean what is uh, about their skill the argumentation skill and also the rhetorical teaching we already talked about it and they also took money and oratory instruction oratory and rhetoric I, i already talked about it so i don't want to recapitulate the whole thing i don't want to repeat it so i would like to move on to the next slide so if you're interested you can just read it from the uh, from the slides that i'm going to share with you and also you can uh, go back to the video the recorded video and you can uh, read it from it. pause the video and you can read this slide বোঝা গেছে তোমরা চাইলে ভিডিওতে যে এটা পজ করে এটা স্লাইডটা পড়তে পারো কিন্তু অলরেডি আমরা এই জিনিসগুলো আলোচনা করে এসেছি সো আই ডোন্ট ওয়ান্ট টু ডিসকাস ইট এনিমোর বাট ওয়ান ইন্টারেস্টিং থিং দ্যাট আই আই ওয়ান্ট টু মেনশন সো দ্যাট ইউ ডোন্ট মিস ইট ফর एग्जांपल দ্য লয়ারস আজকে যে আমরা আজকে বর্তমান সময় আমরা যে লয়ারস দেখি বা আমরা যে লয়ারস দিয়ে কাজ করছি এটা কিন্তু সফিস্টের হাতে কিন্তু এই প্রেসারটা ডেভেলপ হয় তাই না লয়ারস কি করে তারা আইনের বিভিন্ন মার্কেটস দিয়ে জাজদের কনভিন্স করার চেষ্টা করেন এবং তিনি তার পক্ষে কেসটা নিয়ে আসার চিন্তা করেন তাহলে তিনি কনভিন্স করেন রেটরিক ইউজ করেন লিগ্যাল বিভিন্ন কথাবার্তা সেগুলো তিনি ব্যবহার করেন পরে তিনি কনভিন্স করেন এবং তার পক্ষে রাইটা নিয়ে আসার চেষ্টা করেন ইজন্ট ইট ইয়েস স্যার ইয়েস স্যার সুতরাং সফিস্টের মাধ্যমে যে ট্র্যাডিশনাল এডুকেশন সিস্টেম শিক্ষা দেওয়া ছাত্র শিক্ষকের সম্পর্ক এই ব্যাপারটা গড়ে ওঠে এবং সেই সাথে দেখো যে কিছু প্রফেশনাল ডেভেলপমেন্ট এন্ড অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম ইউ ক্যান সি দ্য দ্য গ্রোথ অফ ডেমোক্রেসি এট দ্যাট টাইমস ইন অ্যাথেন্স it was it also dependent on this kind of practices because in democracy in democracy only you allow people to talk right amra ganatantri manusher freedom of speech ta ensure kori na usually do you follow what i'm saying the students amra bakshadinota kothay ache shorachari system e bakshadinota thake प्रश्न फिलोसफी Okay, these are the main sophists you can see from here, the seven sages, I have mentioned it here. The Thales of Miletus, Solon of Athens, Cyril of Sparta, then Pitakas of Mytilene, um, and Bias of Crane, then uh, Cerebulus of Lindos, then uh, another one is, that is Priander of Corinth. So these are the seven sages. So they were the, uh, you can see the propagators or the main proponents of sophism at that time in athens and also in rome and th these are some other names so we will not go for those then the last one is atomism i will just discuss very briefly and then after that we will conclude our today's discussion so the atomism uh, you can see the atomism is a pre-socratic school of thought from ancient greece established in the late 5th century bc by by lykipas of miletus Uh, Lucipas of Miletus, you can see, fifth, fifth century BC, and his more famous student Democritus. So actually, the main or the important persons, the most important person from this atomist is, is school of, uh, or you can say, atomism is school of philosophy. His name is Democritus. He teaches that the hidden substance in all physical objects consists of different arrangements of atoms. In all physical objects, consists of different arrangements of atoms and void. So you see the different. kinds of atoms so tarai prothom bollen je somosto prithibite eta atoms same ekta kichu ache ar baki ta hocche shunno ashole je baki ta shunno noy seta amra jani kintu atomism e atom ta to tara bolechen that was amazing at that time that without having this kind of microscopic uh, i mean you can say electronic microscopes or all the basic microscopes without having that they could say they could feel that that there is something in it is very infinitesimal kind of uh, substance or ingredients is is there 
and that is atoms tara seta ke onuman korechilo jeta khudra the khudra ta kona ache jeta diye jar arrangement er karone amra physical object gulo dekhte pai sob kichur moddhei ei onu kona ta ache tara eta chinta korechilo shei shomoy democrats actually he propagated this and that is atom it was really amazing shekhane erokom scientific development chilo na eto scientific machine potro na thaka shotho tara seta dhorte perechilen bolte perechilen no writings by the movement's founder that is lucipas have survived so a founder jene atomism tori kor ei school of philosophy jene shuru korechilen tar ashe kono lekha khoje paoa jene we have just a few fragments of writings of democritus in the second hand reports very few writings of democritus have been found just fragments kichu chera phata kichu lekha kichu kagoj khondo khondo kichu lekha tar second hand reports othat onno karo lekhate tar lekhar somporke ullekh paoa geche to directly tar nijer kono lekha khoje paoa jay sometimes unreliable and or conflicting and sometimes they are unreliable and conflicting different people actually wrote about democritus contribution to the philosophy in different ways and sometimes it's conflict ekjon bolechen eta korechen arekjon bolechen ebhabe korechen ei jonno ek ek joner lekhate tar somporke je report ta khuje paole eto conflicting majhe majhe seta conflict kore much of the best much of the best evidence is that reported by aristotle in his criticisms of atomism which he regarded as an important rival current in natural philosophy Aristotle actually he didn't believe in atomism and he criticized it so from his writing we came to know about atomism so this is interesting then epicurus studied atomism with it's, it's a very difficult name uh, it's still i will try to pronounce it that is nosifens so it's in nosifens uh, uh, i mean he studied this epicurus epicurus is another group of philosophy uh, philosophers the epicureans who had been a student of epicurus actually it's a name of his student and he was the student of democritus all the epicurus was certain of the existence of atoms and the void he was less sure he could adequately explain specific natural phenomena such as earthquakes lightning comets or the phases of the moon so he was very worried about that whether he can explain the this kind of uh, natural phenomena erokom prakritik ghotona gulo tini পর্যাপ্ত বর্ণনা বা ব্যাখ্যা কি দিতে পারবেন এই অ্যাটমিস্ট বা অ্যাটমিজম অনুযায়ী এই অ্যাটমিজম অনুযায়ী যে ব্যাখ্যা এই ফিলোসফি অনুযায়ী ব্যাখ্যা করে কি তিনি ন্যাচারাল ফেনোমেনা ব্যাখ্যা দিতে পারবেন সেই ন্যাচারাল ফেনোমেনা গুলো কি বা ন্যাচারাল বা প্রাকৃতিক দৃশ্যাবলী বা প্রাকৃতিক ঘটনা গুলো কি কি আর্থকোয়ার্স লাইটনিং কমেটস আর্থকোয়ার্স मींस ভূমিকম্প লাইটনিং মানে হচ্ছে যে আকাশে যে বিদ্যুৎ চমকানো সেটা কমেটস মানে যে ধূমকেতু তো বলছি এগুলোর ব্যাখ্যা কি আসলে এই অ্যাটম বা এই অ্যানালাইসিস দিয়ে করা সম্ভব or the phases of the moon othoba chader je bibhinno bangla amra eta ki bolle je chader je shomoy change hoy ki jabe ekta nam jor bata chandra kal ba whatever i can't remember it at this moment is chader je ekta poriborton je kokhono purnima kokhono amoshya kokhono amra josha bolchi ei poriborton ta ki amra atoms and void ei eta diye byakha kora somvob he went to found his own school of epicureanism so later on he found his own school that is epicureanism that we say at in our present days of the Epicurus and Epicurus followers perhaps the most notable was a roman poet and philosopher lucretius lucretius uh, whose on the nature of things was one of the definitive works of epicureanism but also of atomism so actually it is from the epicureanism that book uh, on the nature of things but also it is about atomism it argues that the universe and all substances eternal composed of atoms moving in an infinite void and nothing else and that the human soul soul also consists of minute atoms that dissipate into smoke when a person dies so you see this is very interesting just try to understand it he's saying that just like i um, mean his uh, predecessors he's saying that, that nothing else there is nothing else except atom and even human soul is made of atom and that human soul consists of minute atoms very tiny weeny atoms and dissipate and dissipate into smoke when a person dies and when a person dies eta dhoar moto kore miliye jay eto manush mara gele tar atta ta dhoar moto kore miliye jay eto hocche tader byakha and also he is saying that these atoms moving in an infinite void and nothing else so these are moving these atoms are all the time they are on movement they are they are not motionless they have motion and the infinite void is shubishal oshim shunnotar majhe এই আটম গুলো সব সময় ঘুরছে ফিরছে কাজ করছে এবং এইভাবে আমাদের এক্সিস্টেন্স আমরা ফিল করতে পারি যে উই আর হিয়ার ইট ডিপিক্স এপিকিউরিয়াস অ্যাজ এ হিরো অফ হু ক্রাশেস দ্য মনস্টার অফ রিলিজিয়ন থ্রু এডুকেটিং পিপল अबाउट व्हाट इज पॉसिबल এন্ড व्हाट इज नॉट पॉसिबल ইন এ ওয়ার্ল্ড কম্পোজ অফ অ্যাটমস সো ইউ সি দ্য এপিকিউরিয়ান এপিকিউরিয়াস হি ইজ এ ফিলোসফার এন্ড হি এস্টাবলিশেস ওন স্কুল অফ থট অফ ফিলোসফি দ্যাট ইজ কলড এপিকিউরিয়ানিজম এন্ড দে বিলিভ দ্যাট देयर ইজ নো রিলিজিয়ন ইউ সি দে সেড দ্যাট রিলিজিয়ন ইজ এ মনস্টার তারা রিলিজিয়নকে কি বলছেন 
এই অ্যাটমিস্টরা বা অ্যাটমিজম যারা আছেন যারা এটা বিশ্বাস করেন এবং যারা ফিকিউরিয়ান যেটা হচ্ছে অ্যাটমিজমের আরেকটা অংশ সেই ফিকিউরিজম তারা কি বলছেন যে রিলিজিয়ন হচ্ছে কি তারা ধর্মকে কি হিসেবে দেখছে বলো তাদের কাছে ধর্ম একটা মনসা বলতে ধর্মের কোনো এক্সিস্টেন্স নাই আমরা মানুষকে শেখাতে পারি কি দিয়ে এই অ্যাটমিজম বা অ্যাটমিস্ট যে ফিলোসফি বা এই ফিকিউরিয়ান ফিলোসফির মধ্যে মানুষকে শিক্ষা দেওয়া সম্ভব বিকজ টু দেম that the whole world it can it is composed of atoms so then why is religion why should we think about religion if there is only atoms and if there is only void so only atom and voids that's the truth nothing else so this is the belief of the uh, i mean philosophers from the atoms and also this isotropism eclipses the importance of atoms and there was little interest expressed in the idea through the whole of medieval period until the its resurrection in the 16th and 17th century although the islamic ashari school of philosophy notably al al ghazali propounded a type of hybrid atomism where atoms are the only people, only the perpetual material things in existence and all else in the world is accidental and contingent events are the direct result of god's constant intervention now this is very interesting here actually we have found the shia belief the especially the asharites a shia ra jara ache tara ei prashno ta kore islamic asharite bola hoy oderke ora shia ekta belief era sunni belief er sathe eta jacche na and during the medieval belief medieval time they revived it these people in the in europe in the medieval time especially in the arab world in the 16th and 17th century the 16th and 17th century they notun kore amar manush atomism ne bhabashu and especially the uh, al ghazali jara amra imam ghazali hishebe jani ashole i will suggest you i mean don't be uh, i mean influenced by imam ghazali and his belief because that is a mixture of philosophy and a little bit of shia belief it's not the real islam so don't uh, don't uh, i mean buy this kind of belief so i'm just warning you so that you don't get uh, confused so al ghazali propounded a type of hybrid atomism so he uh, hybrid atomism is ekta shankar dhoron atomism theory one is uh, these atoms they are perpetual in bengali we call them abhinasho for the dhongshuri and material things are in existence and all the time they are in existence and all these things are their atoms and all else in the world is accidental ar baki ja ache shobi hocche doibo hotat kore esheche accidental hotat kore esheche and the contingent events are the direct result of the god's constant intervention and why actually we are having this world and the rest of the things only there is atoms and atoms is the only truth but this world you me and all these things that we can see in our surroundings amader ashepashe ja kichu dekhte pai eta keno hoyeche srishtikorta tini intervene korechen tini hastakshep korechen ei atomer majkhane tokhon tini ei atom ke bodle manush baniyechen ei atom ke bodle gas baniyechen ei atom ke tini intervene kore baniyechen kono prani atom ke intervene tini kore tini baniyechen universe planet prithibi shob kichu otherwise shobi atom shudhu shei change hoyeche ar ei shei pe asche keno এটা দেখতে এরকম কেন হয়েছে অন্য একটা স্পিচেস কেন তৈরি হয়েছে বিকজ গড ওয়ান্টেড টু ডু সো সৃষ্টি করতে সেরকম চেয়েছেন বলে তাই হয়েছে সো দিস গডস কনস্ট্যান্ট ইন্টারভেনশন দ্যাট मींस গড ইজ অল দা টাইম ইন্টারভেনিং হি ইজ অল দা টাইম অ্যাকচুয়ালি হি ইজ আই মিন হি ইজ ফাংশনিং এন্ড হি ইজ ওয়ার্কিং উইথ দা অ্যাটমস এন্ড হি ইজ চেঞ্জিং অ্যাটমস ইনটু डिफरेंट শেপস এন্ড डिफरेंट কালারস এন্ড डिफरेंट থিংস তিনি সেটাকে মধ্যস্থতা করে এই অ্যাটমস গুলো নিয়ে তিনি অন্য কিছু তৈরি করছেন Do you get the part? What I'm saying here? Do you get it, dear students? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so you can see yes, to some sir. to some extent it, that is scientific. To some extent that is very philosophical and mystical, right? Sir, or at least religion and belief for the night. In total, about it, that he can believe for the sake of God. No, no, no. You have to you have to understand it. I told you that not all the atomists are like this. This is. these are the muslims philosophers they actually took the this atomism from the greek philosophy and they mixed some islamic uh, ideas or islamic belief uh, beliefs with it so they mixed up this phil greek philosophy little bit of greek philosophy and little bit of islamic philosophy they put them together and now they have created something new that's why we call it hybrid atomism this is not original atomism understood now here we have the god all it was only atom atom is the only thing there is no god nothing no religion just the atom but here uh, when it came to the i mean in the muslim world uh, and then the muslim people especially the shia muslims they just changed it so they 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 brought god in it tar er modhe srishti kotha ke dhukiye diyeche so they infused the idea of the belief of god into this and they mixed this atomism and this belief of god uh, within these things they put them together and now they have created a new kind of atomism Okay. Yes, sir. All right. I think uh, this is it. I don't want to go for further explanation about this atomism. If you're interested, you can go through some other matters and also uh, 
uh, on the internet. There are some uh, more on it, actually, Atomism. You can find it there. And also, I'm going to share this video and also uh, the PDF of this today's lecture. So from there, you can also go through all these things if you're really, really interested to know about Atomism more. So if you have any question, you can ask me because I'd like to conclude our today's discussion with this note. So do you have anything to contribute or any question or anything to ask? Dear students, Masum? No, no, sir. Masum Rahan yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any yes, question? Sir. Any question? No, sir. Oh. Saeedul Islam, do you yes, have any sir. question? No, sir. Okay, okay. Sir. All right. That's great. That's great. Good to know that, that you have understood it. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for your participation and also your cooperation. So we'll be, I'll be back with new more things, uh, so new more ideas about these Greek philosophers and also this Western philosophy. So until then, take care of yourself and okay, have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Talk to you next time. Take care.